Hi, I'm Ian, and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In this brief video, I'm just going to show you how I created my first annual yearbook of images that I took. This one was for 2021, and I guess I've had the images uh, digitally on my computer, and I look at them there quite often, but I don't really see them uh, as much as I like. So I thought, why not put a book together and just see how it comes out? And I know the pages are dark, and therefore I wondered if it would be any good. And actually, it came out really well. I'm very pleased with it. So I'm just going to show you uh, how I set it up. Clearly, there's many different uh, firms and uh, businesses you can use to try and do yours. I'll show you how I use mine, how I set it up, and then I'll show you the final uh, edition that came out that I'll leave on a coffee table for, for me to look at occasionally, and maybe people who come around, have a know, and just to show and see my images, because they're too often just left on the computer, and unless you print out one or two to put up on the wall, say it's a bigger picture, um, you rarely kind of see them unless you go back and review them. And I thought this was a good way just to summarize what I did in 2021 with some of the images that I took through that year. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it and I'll show you what the end product looked like as well. So this is the yearbook I did in the end, and I'll show you how I put it together. I use Photobox here in the UK, up in the left-hand corner here. Clearly there are many other suppliers you can use, and it depends on the price. I think um, I ended up paying, with a discount, probably about £50, I think, for this particular album. The key thing to do is obviously decide the size that you want to print out. And I think I did something like uh, a 30 centimetres, so it was uh, kind of one foot across, so that gives you quite a bit of uh, range, but obviously means your images need to be very good to be able to get that kind of depth in there. And you also want to make sure what type of binding you have. Now, I've chose the lay flat type of binding so that when you open it up, it doesn't, after many times, start falling apart with stitching, etc. So you do have to be careful on that and choose the right sort of uh, binding uh, option that you have. But then the first thing you need to do is choose your pictures. So here on the left hand side, you can see all the images I have. And what I did there was I went through all of the images I took in 2021. I catalogued them all so I can see what I took each month and each day through the months. And then I went through and looked at what I thought were good images that would work in a book, recognizing that uh, it's going to be a very black page and I just want to make sure that the images come out and you can see them quite clearly. So then I selected those images and I put them into a folder and then I copied them over here into this area which is what you have to do. And then I went through and chose the particular images I wanted to use. Now, one of the things I did find is on some occasions, once I put them into the album, they didn't look quite as good as the image I was seeing on the screen. So then I went back and actually slightly adjusted them to maybe give them a bit more uh, darkness uh, to bring out the uh, stars or the um, galaxies or to lighten them up. And it depended on each image until I was satisfied. It looked reasonably good as far as it could on my computer screen. Of course, you can never get a perfect answer. But here you can see these are the images I copied across and the ones I selected to go into the book. So quite a few in the end, and I think the book had about 32 pages. I, I paid for an extra few pages, I think, to get them all in there. Um, and then this is it. So on this particular example, you can have a front cover picture. So uh, I put the Rosetta, Rosetta Nebula, Nebula on the front. Uh, and then as you go through, what you do is you basically, basically just take your image and pull it over and put it onto here. And then you can play around with where it actually fits, uh, as you can see. Now, the key thing for me was to make sure that I took it right out to the edge uh, on both sides, because what you don't want is any kind of white gaps, particularly in the center. Uh, and you can see this is what I did. This was one image, actually, of the uh, Crescent Nebula. So I didn't need to worry about the center there. Um, this was done over, I think it was three or four uh, panes that I put together just so I could get the Crescent Nebula there. So that was quite a nice one to do and a challenge to see how it would come out when I printed it. But it, it did come out pretty nicely in the end. Um, but if you go to something like this, what you want to make sure is the image is, as you can see, right overlapping so you don't have any white gaps. And also at the edges, you don't want a white gap over here on the either edge on the left or, or the right hand side. So. But you can play around to get the image where you want it. And 
that's really all there is to it, you know, um, just practice getting that through and then just go through them and see what each of the images look like and see if it's uh, working as far as you can tell on the computer. But I thought it was really good fun and uh, on this one I've got lots of pages. I'll run through them, I'll show you the actual physical copy in a second. But um, I ran through all of these and I think they pretty much all came out very well indeed. So I was very happy with um, how it worked and the process I went through. And I've only just done it, I did this in uh, July uh, 22, so it took a while to uh, think about and doing it. But I thought it was some way to actually make sure you retain the images and don't just have them on the computer and look at them digitally occasionally, but you actually can look at them uh, anytime you want. So uh, hopefully that's helpful and giving you some ideas if you want to do that. And now I'll show you the final finished product. So here's the final product and you can see it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy uh, with how it came out. The detail is quite good. And if we just turn the pages, we can see there's the California Nebula and the Crescent Nebula. That was all one big shot. And then we've got the uh, Elm Nebula and the Skateboard Galaxy, the Elephant Trunk Nebula. And if you go in, the, the print, I'm really pleased with the print. Um, not all the photos are great, but the print's good. The Pelican Nebula, the Heart Nebula, and the key thing is to make sure you get an album that it really bends over so there's no crease in it. Uh, the Pillars of Creation, uh, the Pleiades, and in particular, just make sure you get the uh, image coming right up to the margin. So you've got kind of black all the way across. I think that really works well. Uh, Andromeda, the Whale Galaxy. That was all one shot. So that's the, um, obviously, the Horsehead Nebula and Orion. Um, I merged those two together into one big uh, shot, but it was really done on one night. Um, and then you've got Leo's Triplet, and you've got M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. That was really, that came out really nice. And you see, if you go in close, hopefully you can see that. The quality is pretty good, so um, I'm very happy with that. The Sunflower Galaxy, the North American Nebula, and the Pelican Nebula, um, and you've got M101. Wheel Galaxy, uh, the Cigar and Bodes Galaxy. And these are all shot with my uh, smaller camera from last year, so I can't wait to see what it comes out with with my bigger camera next year. The Moon and uh, the Needle Galaxy. Then you've got the Sun with a partial eclipse, only just got to the end of the day. It was all cloudy that day, so it really only just happened right towards the end. And then you've got the Triangulum Galaxy game. That came out really nicely in the end. And then a close-up of the uh, Horsehead Nebula which uh, again, you can see when you're getting close, I think it's printed out pretty well. I'm very happy with that. Uh, and then the uh, Marconian chain, you've got the M13 star cluster, the Veil Nebula. That was, uh, I think it was four panes I put together to get that into a single shot. And then you've got the uh, Pac-Man Nebula and uh, the Monkey Head Nebula. So I only did those number of pages and uh, Got the uh, last few things, the Cocoon Nebula, and again, the uh, Cygnus Wall in the North American Nebula. And Orion, again, at the back. And then on this particular one, I used to get a final image, which was the uh, Horsehead Nebula. So overall, I'm pretty pleased that uh, it's a good way of just making sure you have your images available to, to look at because you, you leave them digitally and never see them. And it's it's not perfect, but I think it's a really good uh, kind of tabletop just to look at from time to time and remind yourself what you did uh, say in the previous year. So this was my yearbook for 2021. So hopefully that's helpful and uh, give you a few ideas perhaps to, to do your own yearbook, something like the same. Mm -hmm.